Hi friends, once again back to biologyexamsforay.com. Today we are going to discuss about six major bonds in biomolecules, how these bonds are formed, a quick summary of all these major bonds within five to six minutes. So these are the major bonds at a glance. First one is a peptide bond that is in protein, connects two amino acids. Then there is hydrophobic interactions in proteins and then there is disulfide bond in proteins. In the case of DNA, the bonds are phosphodiester bond, then hydrogen bond that connects two strands that is also present in protein. And in the case of carbohydrates, the bond is a glycosidic bond. So we'll be discussing each bond in detail within five to six minutes. First question is how is peptide bond formed in protein? As we all know, proteins are made up of long chains of amino acids that is joined by peptide bond that forms the primary structure of protein. Let's take an example of an amino acid. So this is the structure of an amino acid. There's a central carbon atom, a hydrogen, an amino group, NH2 group, and a carboxyl group, COOH group. Then there is R, this is a side chain, and this varies with different amino acid. So first, let us take this side chain. Suppose this is H, then this is the simplest amino acid, and that is glycine. So we have glycine as the first amino acid, and this is the second amino acid. Let's take it as glycine. So we have two glycine, two amino acids. And how peptide bond is formed between these amino acids? Let us see. This H and OH, this combines to form water and this water is removed also called as dehydration or condensation reaction so the rest is c double bond o nh c double bond o nh and that is the peptide bond that connects the two amino acids hope this much is clear moving into the second bond that is disulfide bond in protein so this is between the sulfur containing amino acids and this is a cysteine, sulfur containing amino acid. You can see this is a SH group. And the bond is the SS bond or disulfide bond. That is by the oxidation reaction. So it's a covalent bond that is formed by oxidation between sulfur containing amino acids like cysteine. This bond may be formed between different regions of the same chain or maybe between different polypeptide chains and it provides rigidity to the protein molecule so disulfide bond is formed between sulfur containing amino acids in proteins and the third bond is a hydrophobic bond so let's take this example suppose this is an unfolded protein and this blue color is a hydrophilic region containing hydrophilic amino acids Whereas this red region is a hydrophobic region and contains hydrophobic amino acids. So in aqueous solution inside the cell, the tendency of hydrophobic amino acids to be in the core and also the hydrophilic amino acids or water loving amino acids to be in contact with water that forms the hydrophobic interactions or it is formed by two nonpolar groups or hydrophobic amino acids. So hydrophobic amino acids will occupy the center and whereas hydrophilic amino acids will occupy outside interacting with water. And this is one of the most important interaction that is responsible for protein folding. And the fourth one is a hydrogen bond in protein. Hydrogen bond is comparatively a weak bond in which the hydrogen is bound to a highly electronegative atom like oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, etc. So it is the electromagnetic attractive interaction between polar molecules, polar amino acids. This is serine with the OH side group. So it's a weak bond, but it has strength by its additive effect. So amino acids with side chains, as in the case of serine, this is a hydroxyl amino acid, serine, threonine, etc. And also with amino group, as in the case of lysine, arginine, etc. can participate in the formation of hydrogen bond, HO bond, HN bond, like that. 
Now moving to the second topic that is bonds in DNA. As you all know this is the double helical structure of DNA. Let us zoom in and this is exactly the chemical nature of this strand. Here we have the first bond that is the phosphodiester bond that connects two nucleotides, the building blocks of a DNA. Then there is the second bond that is a hydrogen bond that connects two strands of DNA. And the third one is a bond that connects the sugar residue and the nitrogenous bases within a nucleotide and which is the glycosidic bond. So in DNA there are three bonds. First is the hydrogen bond, second one is a phosphodiester bond and third one is a glycosidic bond. Now let us see how these bonds are formed. So this is a nucleotide. That is a sugar, that is a nitrogenous piece and this is a phosphate group. And this is the second nucleotide sugar, base and the phosphate group. First nucleotide and this is the second nucleotide. So phosphodiester bond is a bond that connects two nucleotides. It is the CO bond. You can see right here this is the CO bond and here also there is CO. So there are two ester bonds this CO and this CO from 3-O and 5 dash. CO and that is connected through phosphate that is why it is called as phosphodiester bond. It's a very strong bond that can withstand high temperatures. First this is a first CO bond and this is a second CO bond and that is linked through phosphate that's why it is called as phosphodiester bond. Now the second bond that is a hydrogen bond between nitrogenous bases in DNA nitrogenous bases are thiamine, adenine, cytosine and guanine. Adenine and guanine and are two ringed called as purines whereas cytosine and thiamine are pyrimidines and are one ringed. And these nitrogenous bases of two strands are connected by hydrogen bond and this is a hydrogen bond that connects AT and GC. In the case of adenine and thiamine there is two hydrogen bond whereas in the case of guanine and cytosine there is three hydrogen bonds. It's a comparatively weak bond that separates during DNA replication and also it can be separated by heating or subjecting to high temperature treatment. And this is a hydrogen bond. Here this is a hydrogen bond, three hydrogen bonds between cytosine and guanine. And the third bond in DNA is a glycosidic bond in DNA. Glycosidic bond is between the sugar of DNA and also the nitrogenous base of DNA. Sugar and nitrogenous base is connected by this glycosidic linkage. In the case of sugar it is a C1 position whereas this is adenine. You can see it is a N9 position, nitrogen 9th N9 atom. So this, this is with the removal of water molecule and this CN bond is called as a glycosidic bond. In the case of pyrimidine it is with C1 first carbon atom of the sugar and the first nitrogen atom of the pyrimidine base. This is also a condensation reaction where water is removed forming a bond. Next is glycosidic bond in carbohydrates. Let's take an example. So this is glucose. So two glucose units or monosaccharides. Now there is a removal of water molecule. You can see water molecule is removed. Then the rest we have an oxygen atom. This is the first glucose unit, the first carbon atom. Therefore it is one and in the second glucose unit it is a fourth carbon atom that is linked by oxygen. So therefore the bond is called as, as hydrogen is above the plane, the bond is called as alpha 1 for glycosidic linkage or glycosidic bond. Here two monosaccharide unit glucose combines to form a disaccharide which is maltose by glycosidic linkage with the removal of water molecule. 
So glycosidic bonds joins monosaccharides or it forms disaccharides, oligosaccharides, polysaccharides, etc. in carbohydrates. So these are the major bonds in biomolecules. You are with biologyexamsorry.com. Thank you so much for your support.